For this demo, we want kind of a soft painterly effect for wood that maybe isn't super detailed because it's not in the foreground or because it's, you know, not the focal point of the painting. So I'm making up kind of a wood wood box to follow along with. I'm using a Payne's Gray to start to just like darken in some different sides. This is my kind of navy shadow color. I use it a lot in my acrylics. I haven't caught on yet. But there you go. I admit it. Um, and to just preserve some of my line work too, because since we're doing a lot of wet blending for the texture of this, it's going to get hard to kind of see where we came from, where we're ended up at. I will also fully admit I did this demo twice because the first time I forgot to hit record. So you live, you learn. So as we're blocking this in, um, helping to make sure our perspective is mostly on point, uh, I want to remind us that it's important to also do kind of a tonal shift to help us sell the dimension and the way the lighting is coming so that's why i'm entirely cooling down and shadowing this whole side before we even start and the top is pretty shadowed it's going to just help be underneath there and help remind us as we're moving forward that that side should be cooler and darker and this side can be warmer and have more texture when doing wood grain like this that we don't want like super a lot of grain showing through and we don't want to paint every board and we're not doing like perfect realism I think wet blending and a flat brush is an amazing technique. So I'm mixing a bit of red. I've got purple here. I've got a nice brown. I'm using a Mars brown and an ochre. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just, oh, poor brush. I'm going to go ahead and just fill it in because we need like enough paint on the page to be able to start getting it to move around the way we want. Keep your brush moving the direction of the grain that you're creating. So in that case, the boards are going this way. I'm just loading up my brush with a couple other colors, slapping them on top of that while it's still wet, and then turning the brush flat ways and sort of glazing over the top of it. I'm then getting a little bit of white on the brush, stippling it into the other color I was mixing, and just brushing it lightly over the top of everything. So essentially, you've got a wet flat brown, I'm turning the brush on an angle and laying down like lines of other colors, different colors, and then just softly turning the brush flat and just like kind of going over it once to, to kind of blend them softly together and allowing those like painterly streaks to be what says it's a board. Um, using a little bit of my shadow color, my Payne's Gray, to just start bumping in some of those actual defining architecture lines and to add us a couple shadow lines as well. The annoying thing about working on a box like this is that each, like those board, that's probably like three or four boards in a panel. And then each of these boards on the side, I like to do on their own so that I can kind of sculpt specifically their colors as they're coming forward, but also sometimes they're running the opposite direction like this one is, so you kind of have to do them separate. But it's the same technique. You just have to be a little bit more careful or use a smaller brush. I still am using my flat. I'm just turning it sideways a lot more. Um, so it's laying down kind of a base color, getting enough paint on the page, and then while it's still wet, so you've got to work a little quick, adding these other colors and kind of brushing them together. You can also double load your brush. You'll see me do that a couple times in here where I just like don't mix the ink or the paint all the way in the palette. I let it be kind of all over my brush. Maybe I've got three visible colors on it. And then when you swipe it lengthwise, you get kind of a variated, variegated um, color layout that works well for faking wood grain really quickly. So on the front, I'm using a lot more of the reds, of the yellows, because I want it to be a little bit warmer. So you can see I've just sort of gl like glided over that and added the red. The white does it a lot to help because that's always going to be your most visible. And if you want it to look more worn, usually wood gets lighter as it ages, especially along the tops. So that's showing the kind of like highlight and age of it. Over here, I'm mixing my brown with quite a bit of purple because I really want to sell that this is <laughs> cooler tone over here. Um, a little more brown on top of it. And then I'm going ahead and painting the vertical boards at the same time. So I'm getting kind of a base coat on everything before I start mixing in a little bit more texture. still using a bit of orange and a bit of red 
this is where you can see I've got kind of a double load on my brush. It's got a couple different colors on it. I didn't just mix it all that well. And then I'm just kind of allowing them to mix on the page instead of mixing them in my palette and then cleaning off my brush and then picking it up. I'm still using white on the side, but because it's layered over the cooler colors, it certainly like is going to throw itself more cool, which white always wants to do anyway. So instead of fighting that, we're gonna use it to our advantage. I decided it was too difficult to paint around any details that were on the top, so I just painted it as a flat piece and then I will like carve out the architecture of it while I'm painting these kind of edging panels around the whole thing because as soon as I touch it with that white, it's gonna come to the foreground or look like it's above whatever it's on. A fine brush is great also for adding any additional grain that you want. Uh, here I'm just adding in the shadows, but I could easily use this to like add a little bit more grain, add a little bit more texture. It doesn't have to be the shadow colors. I could be doing that with any of the colors that are mixed into the wood if something ever looks like too soft focus. So if this were in like the background of a room, we'd want the lighting to kind of match what was going on everywhere else, but we also um, might realize later that it needs to be a little lighter, a little darker. So I'm using water and a wash of the blue to just once again bump this even cooler, even bluer, to help show depth or add age. That's a nice way to do it, is like a water wash of another color if you realize that your colors weren't bright enough or weren't specific enough. Um, or here in the front, I'm using kind of a dry brush technique, a bit of water, and a bit of the yellow ochre to just add a little bit more warmth to this front panel to create more difference between it and the sides. You can always layer other things over your acrylics, so I'm using colored pencil quick to just do some of my tiny, like, the little itty bitty cracks and add a, a real fast shadow, but you can here. see some of the details here, the way that texture sort of looks like wood, but it's mostly just blended brush strokes, and if we zero zoomed out, we would be able to kind of, like, let that fade in the background. 